trees, in the trees, singing strange melodies. And they made that the start of the blues. And from a jail came the wail of a downhearted frail. And they played that as part of the blues. From a whippoorwill out on a hill, they tell the new note. Pushed it through a hole till it was worn into a blue note. And then they nursed it and rehearsed it and gave out the news that the Southland gave birth to the blues. From a whippoorwill out on a hill, they took a new note, pushed it through a horn till it was worn into a blue note, and then they nursed it and rehearsed it and gave out the news that the Southland gave birth to the blues. Now you probably recognise what we just played or what I played at the very beginning as a cadenza from Rhapsody in Blue. What you may or may not know is that Gershwin didn't actually write that. It was actually written by um, Paul Whiteman's clarinetist George Grisich. And it was written as a joke at the dress rehearsal. And Gershwin liked it so much that he said, keep it in and wail as much as possible. Now, present at that first performance, at, uh, which was actually in 1924 in New York, was Fritz Kreisler, the violin player, Leopold Stokowski, Willie the Lion Smith, the fabulous uh, piano player who fought in the trenches in the First World War, Philip de Souza, who uh, wrote those wonderful marches, and I leave this chap till last, Stravinsky. Stravinsky was a great jazz fan. He wrote the um, Ebony Clarinet Concerto, of course, for Woody Herman. And uh, he also wrote some other pieces as well. Now, he also li he liked jazz. And what he didn't know was that Charlie Parker was a great fan of Stravinsky's music. And I get quite emotional when I relate this because Stravinsky went to hear Charlie Parker play in New York in 1951, actually, and they didn't acknowledge each other. But at the end of the second tune, Charlie Parker started, pl in his solo, started playing quotes from Stravinsky's Firebird. Stravinsky just burst out laughing, and that sort of <laughs> broke the ice. Gershwin played piano in that performance, and he also improvised. Okay. Now, the glissando and portamento that starts off that um, is actually goes right back to the cotton fields, to the, the idea of call and response. And Gershwin, of course, had a strong association with the blues, because that structure led to the creation of the blues. And he, as we know, he wrote Porky and Bess. We're going to play Basin Street Blues. And again, what you may not know is that the introduction, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, actually wasn't part of the original tune. It was actually written by Jack Teagarden and Glenn Miller on a recording session. So here we go with the Basin Street Blues. Oh, won't you come along with me Way down the Mississippi We'll take a trip to the land of dreams Steam down the river, down to New Orleans Oh, the band's there to meet us There'll be old friends to greet us 
Where all the dark and the light folks mean Heaven on earth, they call it Basin Street Hmm, Basin Street is the street Where the light and dark folks meet Down in New Orleans, the land of dreams You'll never know how nice it seems Or just how much it really means Glad to be, yes siree Where welcome's free and dear to me Where I can lose my Basin Street Blues You come along with me Way down the Mississippi We'll take a trip To the land of dreams Steam down the river Down to New Orleans In the 1920s, everything changed. The brothels in Storyville were closed on November <laughs> 1917. Yeah, what a shame. Because there were a lot of military bases there and there was an edict saying that there couldn't be naval bases within so many miles of the brothels. The high-class brothels, actually, I happen to know, not from personal experience, moved to a different location. But what really happened to cri cripple the economy was the bow, we the bow weevil happened to the to the cotton crop for three rows in a year, and of course this had a devastating effect on the economy. This is known as the Great Mi Migration, and a lot of the jazz musicians moved to Chicago. Louis Armstrong had already gone to Chicago to play second um, corner, of course, with King Oliver. We're now talking about, yes, it's up there, the Jazz Age, and this was the time of speakeasies, Prohibition, the Great Gatsby, and of course Al Capone. The most popular tune at that time, of course, was the Charleston, and we'll play the Charleston for you. Another quick anecdote is a lady went to the chemist and she said, I'd like to buy some arsenic. The chemist said, I can't sell you one arsenic, that's illegal. Why do you want to buy some arsenic? And she said, I want to poison my husband. She said, you can't, he, he said, you can't do that, that's murder. Why do you want to murder your husband? And she said, he's having an affair with your wife. <laughs> and the chemist said, sorry, I didn't realize you had a prescription. Okay, so one of the big band leaders of that time was Benny Goodman. There he is. I was privileged to hear him in 1972. He was about my age at the Royal Albert, Albert Hall, and at the end of the concert he stood in tears. So I'm going to play one of his, one of his tunes. He, it was used in the film when his father died. He played a great tune called Memories of You. Thank you. 
we're going to play Take the A Train. It's just interesting to uh, think how this particular tune got the name. But Billy Strayhorn was going up to New York to meet with Duke Ellington when they wrote this tune and he said to Duke Ellington, how do I get there? And he said, take the A train. Okay, well, look, the other well-known clarinet player in that era was, of course, Woody Herman. And I, I, I had the privilege of spending the afternoon with Woody Herman here in Perth before he played at the concert hall. The reason he was still playing at about my age, this <laughs> could be my problem, is when he had the big band doing the swing era, he never paid any tax. And the tax department in America took his Hollywood house from him. But he was still going around the world and he was still playing and uh, he always had very, very... He had Harry Sweet Ed Edison on trumpet and um, Al Cohen on sax. Anyway, his big hit, of course, was The Golden Wedding. Okay. Okay. 